Hi, I'm Roosevelt Mitchell III reporting for Your Black World about black lives, about black news. I read an article a few weeks ago that a bank account was activated and 17 protesters from Ferguson were paid over $2,700 a piece. I'm here today with one of the signatories who was on the bank account, activist and a person whom I respect, Miss Jamala Rogers. How you doing today? Good, good afternoon. How are you? I'm oh, fantastic. Thank you so, so much for your time and for you coming to speak. Yeah, on thanks the for having me. No problem. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Okay. I've gotten a lot of feedback on that, on that article. Yes, I think you named the article hashtag cut the check is not a movement. Can you expound on that for us? Well, one of the things that happened, and just to give your uh, listeners a, a, beat, a brief background, uh, there was an account set up that was to really uh, fund different uh, organizations and individuals who were doing movement related activities or programmatic activities. So for example, if I was, uh, uh, my organization was making banners for a particular protest, then I could uh, uh, request funds from that account for you know, paint or brushes and that kind of thing. So, so really, it was the first time that uh, in our movement in St. Louis that we had that kind of a fund where we could go to it and have some some um, some some funding there to do some things. I mean, usually we like scraping and scratching and, and that kind of thing. So that fund was for that purposes. And out of the blue, as far as I'm concerned, there were. Uh, 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 several people who came to say that they thought they deserved the, the, the money out of that account. Uh, there were a uh, member of more organization and the Organization for Black Struggle who were uh, stewards of that account. And me and another person were also signatories on that account. So those folks came to the Moore office demanding the check and said that they weren't going to leave until they got their money. And it was a pretty, from what I understand, a pretty uh, tense situation. And so those 17 people were cut a check. And afterwards, uh, on Twitter, someone said, cut the check, hashtag cut the check, go get your check. And so that's where that particular uh, title came from because I felt like, first of all, as, as a signatory on the account, uh, who had no um, input on whether or not these people got checks, as well as somebody who sees myself as a steward of the Black Liberation Movement, of the social justice movement, really looking at that behavior is something that is not helpful, not useful, and very destructive uh, to our movement. Uh, and so many other, in fact, thousands of other uh, people who were involved in the protest uh, in the uprising in Ferguson were saying, wait a minute, you know, I did what I did in Ferguson because I was committed to the struggle. I wasn't intending to get paid, right. but if there's checks available, why am I not getting my check? Right. So, so then people started saying, well, Jamala, you've been around for a long time. Have you ever seen anything like this happen? Uh, what do you think should be done? Uh, can you write something about it? And so that really propelled me to write the article. And so what I had hoped to do is not so much attack people who got the checks, but really lift up that kind of behavior uh, that has no place in our movement. I mean, first of all, threatening people to do anything and, and you're supposed to be on the same side is just unacceptable. And so those are the kind of lessons that I was trying to lift up so not just people in St. Louis can benefit from it, but you know, these kinds of uh, uprisings are happening all over the country, whether it be Baltimore, uh, Philly, uh, Wisconsin, and so that my uh, article went all over the country from coast to coast and got a lot of, you know, feedback on it, and, and people were sort of surprised that this has happened in St. Louis, but I think because of the nature of the struggle, and we're in 2015, uh, and, and, it, and this struggle is an intense one as it deals with police repression, I, I think that it wasn't surprising that something like this would happen. But I think one of the things that many of us be felt that it had to be nipped in the bud because we don't want this to be behavior that people start to duplicate.
Exactly. Because then exactly. it is it's very, very destructive. And not only that, people will not want to give money to St. Louis folks because if, if folks are going to be hijacked every time money comes in, then that's going to be a problem. Exactly. So it, because it's, I, it's, a, it's a problem on so many different levels, Roosevelt. So, really, it is. So I read the article and it stated that uh, it, it called it the Gang 17. It was 17 individuals received $27.50 apiece that equated to roughly $50,000 that pretty much bankrupted the account, right? Right, it pretty much cleaned out the account so other people who had activities or, or requests, uh, we won't be able to fund them. So that's the end of that. And so that again, is it points to one of the, uh, the negatives of, of that action is like that account is, is gone, it's probably gonna be uh, closed and uh, and now nobody else can be a beneficiary of those funds because of a few selfish people. So why? And I, and I will say, Roosevelt, that some of the 17 uh, are having second thoughts about the way that that action went down. Uh, and some of them haven't cashed their checks. Uh, there were also people who refused to take the checks. So I just want to, you know, lift that up because everybody that was, was rallied to do that didn't participate. Okay. And I, I wanted to ask just for the viewers, those were funds that was raised by, uh, by the group. So while the, those 17 individuals are, whoever cast their checks or whoever demanded it, felt like they should be compensated. Well, that remains a mystery to me today. I mean, I don't, uh, I mean, some of the things that I was told was that some of the folks had made sacrifices and they were, uh, had become homeless or they had lost jobs or uh, and these these are serious things. I mean, this is not to be scoffed at, but from what I can also been told is that that was, those decisions were personal decisions. So, for example, if I'm in school and my staying in school is connected to me staying home rent free, and then I tell my mama that, I'm going to be uh, on West Florissant every day and I won't be able to go to school, so I'm quitting. And her response is, well, since you're not going to school or, or working, you're getting out of my house. So, so some of that was happening. Uh, and I, I dare say that there were many other uh, young people and not so young people who stayed in school. Some of them just graduated uh, in May. And so it wasn't a thing that just because you quit school that the movement is going to take care of you. So that notion also needs to be addressed. And that's why I put in the article that people I've known for decades and decades who had uh, devoted their life to the struggle actually died without health care. And some of them are living now without pensions because they didn't have a, a quote regular job that gave them those benefits they were organizing for the movement and so uh those to me are people who are, are deserving of anything that the movement uh has to offer in terms of extra discretionary funds but again that's that's not what the movement is about uh and so when you when you come into the movement you're doing it with the understanding that you're giving you're not taking, you're giving. And right. I, I joke and said since this article came out, in many ways you're paying to be in the movement because as you know, things need to happen. You put my money for gas, you're getting people here and there, uh, you're buying stamps, you, you know, all kinds of stuff are coming out of your own pocket and that's just the way we roll. So, uh, so the notion that somehow you have to be paid to be in the movement is, is unacceptable and we just felt like it, that, that that particular attitude just needs to be lifted up and uh, criticized for what it is. Exactly, exactly. Because when you are in the movement, you are serving. You serving others. So it's an act of service. It's not an act to get paid, or it's not a job, or it's not an excuse to drop out of school. It's it's an act of right, service. Exactly. And, right. if, and if you decide to do that, you know that's something that you decide to do. Uh, but that you shouldn't ask anybody to be. Um, responsible for funding you and so that's the thing that's, that's just a little bit uh, unnerving to me is where the notion it came from that somehow the movement is supposed to pay you for your personal um, finances and so um, so I'm, I'm hoping that the paper uh, is going to be a discussion piece 
and apparently it has been. Uh, I'm on my way to uh, Madison, and I definitely have shared it with the folks that I'll be uh, doing a workshop and plenary for. And so we, we're going to we're going to have a discussion about it because I don't think this is the first uh, or the last time that we'll see this kind of behavior. Exactly. And I want to ask you a quick question because around the time that the Baltimore uprising was going on, uh, it was stated. I can't remember where I read it or heard it at that some of the people who were doing the negative things were paid. So then all of a sudden after that, then this hashtag cut the check movement. So I want to ask just your feeling or your thoughts on, do you think that people are paid to disrupt the movement today? I, I would say there's always been people who get paid to do almost anything, Roosevelt. I mean, everybody's got a price. But by and large, the people who have been in these movements, and particularly the people who have sustained them, because keep in mind that there's going to be an upsurge of people who will respond, and then those numbers are going to dwindle as people get back to their uh, routine. But there's always a group of sustained folks who are going to continue that struggle. And those people are definitely not getting paid. And sometimes because they may work for a social justice movement, they are allowed to participate as part of their job. But generally, uh, folks who come out to a protest, folks who uh, send letters to their older person, who, uh, uh, who do anything to raise their voice in a collective way, those people by and large are not getting paid. Right. Right. Well, okay. Thank you so, so much for your time, Ms. Jamala. And I want to give you the last word and let you also uh, tell people how to follow you on your blog and your website and things of that nature. Well, we, I, I'd like people to uh, give me input on not just this issue, but any other issues that they see going around town. And my blog is at jamalarogers.com. Uh, but there's many ways that people can get involved in this particular struggle. I mean, we just won a historic uh, battle here in St. Louis with the Civilian Oversight Board. And, and so we have two days to get candidates in for that. And so if people are interested in serving on that uh, Civilian Oversight Board, uh, they can uh, go to capcar.com, I mean, capcar.org, and uh, look at the uh, application and see if that's something that they might want to do, because here's another way to serve. So that's the Coalition Against Police Crimes and Repression. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I love your earrings, by the way. Again, <laughs> I'm Roosevelt Mitchell III reporting for Your Black World, and please support our latest film, Resurrecting Black Wall Street. You can go to resurrectingblackwallstreet.com. It is a story that our children need to know as we are trying to build another Black Wall Street here in 2015. Thank you so much for your time. Stay blessed. I'm out. Peace. Thank you, Roosevelt. Keep up the good work.